Good morning, and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. As you can see, I'm here kind of trying to dodge the sunlight as it's streaming into my excuse for a studio, but in any event, gonna get things done today. A couple little uh, things to talk about. I'm planning on heading to Boca Chica soon and uh, gonna be looking to try to do a bit of a fundraising drive. And yes, in the, in the aftermath of everything else you guys have done for me, it's a terrible time to even start asking for something like this. But the fact of the matter is, is Starship is plunging ahead. Static Fire is probably going to take place early next week, and we are going to be looking at a launch very, very soon. I definitely want to cover this for all of you. So in any event, if there's anything, obviously, that you can do, it'd be deeply appreciated. And also, I just released my first Discord exclusive video. The second one will be coming out as soon soon as I hit my fundraising goal. So I have a little bit of an incentive for everybody. In addition, I have also got the 100K challenge and I've got shirts to support it now. The 100K sub club and the race that everybody knows about that I've got a bet riding on between Vulcan and Starship. And I even have the t-shirts reserved for Team Vulcan and Team Starship. So choose your side. Check the links in the description and check it out. Got some awesome merch coming your way very soon. All right, enough self-promotion. Let's talk about futuristic propulsion. So we've talked about nuclear. We've talked even about antimatter propulsion during this week, a week dedicated to a future futuristic rather propulsion, some incredible breakthroughs that we are just on the verge of putting into practical use, especially when we're talking about nuclear propulsion to reduce the transit times from here to Mars and here even to the Jovian worlds radically. But is there a way to make it even better? Well, when it comes right down to it, the best way to make the most efficient and fastest ship is to not carry your fuel with you because the fuel represents the lion's share by far of the mass that you need to push if you're trying to reach extremely high speeds. And we've already talked about light sails a number of times on this channel. One of the drawbacks to light sails, of course, is the huge amount of power that's required, the massive laser arrays that would be needed in order to push something like this. But there's a way to make it more efficient, and it's called the Photon Pellet Drive. Let's check it out. Interestingly enough, the motivation behind this particular type of propulsion comes not from a desire to send humans out to the Jovian worlds or perhaps even to other stars, but rather to create the largest possible telescope, a telescope that uses our own sun as a lens. Here's the idea behind it. As you can see from the description in this NASA promotional video, the sun acts as a gravitational lens which magnifies the light from objects behind it. For example, an exoplanet, which allows us to observe these exoplanets a lot more closely and in greater detail. This is called an Einstein ring. However, to exploit an Einstein ring, you would need to have a telescope positioned 500 astronomical units, or 500 times the distance from the Sun to the Earth, in order to exploit the gravitational lens provided by the Sun. 
one. However, if you were able to do that and then combine all the images you were able to gather from this gravitational lens into a single image, it would be like having a telescope as huge as the sun, providing us the types of images that we would need to see exoplanets in detail and perhaps extraterrestrial civilizations. However, even the Voyager 1 and 2 probes are only 159 and 132 astronomical units from the sun, respectively. So how the hell can you possibly get that kind of distance away from the sun in a reasonable amount of time using today's technology? Well, one solution, as you're looking at right now, would be a light sail. This particular design was funded by the Planetary Society and proved to be extremely successful. However, the problem with light sails is photons, which provides the momentum, are extremely lightweight. Therefore, in order to get any kind of appreciable thrust on a spacecraft of any sort of respectable size, you need to have a very powerful laser array. We're talking a laser array powered by at least a nuclear reactor and perhaps something even more powerful than that. So, if you want to have a light sail that reaches these kinds of velocities that would achieve 500 astronomical units in a reasonable amount of time, well, that's going to take a laser array that's a bit in the future. We could build it now, but the amount of money and power required would be utterly colossal. So what's another solution? Could we perhaps find a way of moving a light sail a bit more swiftly? Well, yes we can. The idea behind photon pellet propulsion is instead of using photons to push the spacecraft, you instead use the photons, or rather a very powerful laser beam, but only about 10 megawatts worth of power. We're not talking about colossal laser beams here, but instead a laser that we could theoretically build in the foreseeable future, and then use that laser beam to push not the spacecraft, but instead tiny particles from a collection of fuel in orbit that you would target, and those particles would in turn be accelerated towards the sail at a speed of about 120 kilometers per second or greater. And once they collide with the sail, the sail is pushed forward at a much higher velocity simply because the particles colliding with it are much heavier than a photon. Therefore, you get a lot more acceleration out of a lot less laser power. Now, you're not talking enormous relativistic velocities here, but you are talking speeds nine times faster than Voyager at the very least, which allows you to achieve speeds of 30 astronomical units per year in a short amount of time. So instead of the painfully slow acceleration rates that we saw with the Planetary Society's light sails, we instead would have a blisteringly fast acceleration going so quickly that you could reach Mars, at least in theory, in the space of about 10 days. Now, of course, you would also need a laser array at the receiving end in order to decelerate, so there are some complications involved with this, at least if you're talking about Earth to Mars, but to answer one of the questions or criticisms that I've gotten from viewers in the past as to just how much this acceleration rate would splatter the passengers in the process of going to Mars this quickly, well, just to be clear, at a 1G acceleration rate, all the way to Mars, you would actually get there in three days. And that's with a constant 1G acceleration. We're not even talking about that. We're talking about 10 days to Mars. So as long as you had constant and gradual acceleration the whole way, you would be looking at a fraction of 1G. Not enough to splatter your passengers. You don't have to worry about that factor. However, you would need a laser array to decelerate at your destination unless you're talking about the solar gravitational lens. Something that far out could utilize the sun's gravity and other factors in order to decelerate once you arrived at your destination. 
Now let's look at this in greater detail. The laser is fired either from Earth or from orbit passing through plasma or just a collection of matter that would be ionized by the high energy laser and driven at a very high velocity towards the spacecraft. Now in the future, these tiny particles using nanotechnology could in theory be designed to steer themselves towards the destination. But the advantage is that these these ionized particles would not diverge as much from their course as a laser does. Lasers diffract and diffuse over distance, and so you need a more powerful laser the further the spacecraft is from the firing point. Not so much with pellet propulsion. The ionized particle beam would stay on target, and instead of having a traditional light sail, you would probably have a magnetically charged plate of some kind that the particles would collide with, driving the spacecraft forward. Again, we're not talking relativistic speeds, but still fast enough to get to Jupiter in just a couple of months, and Saturn in less than six months. Enormous amounts of velocity we're talking Talking about here, making interplanetary travel even to the outer Jovian worlds very realistic. And this technology has the potential for becoming more advanced and more refined over time. Here's a more detailed diagram. Number one, solar power stations in orbit power thousands of accelerators, either linear accelerators, microwaves, or light resonant pressure concepts. And then these accelerators shoot small smart micro pellets at precise velocities to reach the beam rider, as they're calling it, that's the name of the spacecraft, a pretty cool name in my opinion, at the right time and relative velocity up to hundreds of astronomical units away from the laser array. Now, one of the futuristic ideas behind this overall concept, and I like this, is for the submicron pellets to steer themselves towards the beam rider or spacecraft. Again, with nanotechnology, that's certainly could be possible in the future, and the way it works again is for the lasers to turn the pellets into a plasma reflected and targeted using a magnetic mirror field. The reflected plasma, once it hits its target or hits the spacecraft, is left nearly dead in space, its momentum transferred to the beam rider. Other lasers would then ionize interstellar atoms and debris, again driving it towards the spacecraft to give it even more velocity, and you could use the same system to place a micro pellet trail, a trail of slower moving micro pellet ions to slow the ship down once it starts getting closer to its destination. That's one of a number of ways to decelerate the ship without requiring a laser array at the other end. But regardless of the exact system that you decide to use, the principle of accelerating your spacecraft without having to carry enormous amounts of fuel on board is, in my opinion, the best way of making this system work. And indeed, there is evidence to indicate, as I have suggested in previous videos, that there are other interstellar civilizations who are all making use of this type of propulsion system to drive enormous amounts of mass between the stars. Linked in the description, I have an article from Avi Loeb and one of his contemporaries about the idea of a planet planet-sized, water-cooled solar array generating enough energy to project a beam of radio energy towards a radio sail rather than a light sail that could, in theory, drive half a million tons worth of mass up to 50% of the speed of light. And this is from a variety of fast radio bursts that we've observed throughout the universe, indicating, if they are indeed coming from an artificial source, that every interstellar civilization comes to the same conclusion as to which propulsion system is the best way to explore the stars. This is, of course, a theory in the extreme, but still an exciting prospect, especially given the fact that there are many fast radio bursts that we found throughout the cosmos that don't seem to be coming from magnetars or any other identifiable astronomical phenomena. However, before we get too carried away, 
we need to get back to the original story that a technology and a principle that we understand and have the current power and the current capability of creating now could, in theory, drive us not only to Mars in the space of 10 days, but to Jupiter in 60 days, Saturn in less than six months, and all the way out to Neptune in a year. And once again, this is without having to build massive, multi-kilometer size laser arrays, without having to generate enormous amounts of energy, without having to use antimatter or fusion, but instead using the technology that we have available to us right now, lasers, ionized matter, and magnetic fields. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please again check the description for various ways to support my future trip to Boca Chica, and as always, stay angry about space!